Senator Delfon. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honorable Senators, it is a pleasure for me to speak to Senator Klein's inquiry, which seeks to recognize the contribution of Indigenous businesses to the Canadian economy, and especially Quebec's economy. Despite this late hour, I hope that this pleasure is shared. I will deal with three points. First of all, the context of economic reconciliation, and second, the uh, Aboriginal develop Economic Development Corporations, and also those businesses that have begun in Quebec and that are models, models to be followed. First of all, the big picture. In this country called Canada, Indigenous peoples have contributed enormously to our economic prosperity since Jacques Cartier. And there have always been economic uh, uh, connections with the uh, Aboriginal people. But these, these Indigenous people saw that they had imposed on them a certain way of doing things. The colonizers put in place a system of land appropriation and wealth appropriation, which was done at a high price. In 1966, our, gov our governance system came in and it implemented a racist policy imposing the uh, principle of white uh, supremacy. And this led to the residential school system uh, being forbidden to use uh, indigenous languages and other forms of assimilation. Strategic directions and made progress. Sorry. Maintenant, le temps est venu. And now it's time for reconciliation, especially economic reconciliation, as suggested by the uh, uh, call to action 72. Actions and made progress on this goal in recent years. In 2021, Senator Klein and others addressed economic reconciliation in our debate on Bill C-15, respecting the United Nations declarations on the rights of indigenous peoples. Senator Klein spoke about the importance of involving indigenous business organizations in the UNDRIP action plan. We are looking for forward for, we're looking forward to the government plan that will hopefully deliver on that commitment. We also heard from Senator Klein today about the importance of Bill C-45. Senators, indigenous entrepreneurs and business owners are key to self-determination and increasing indigenous participation in the Canadian economy. This participation must be a priority for Canada. The Canadian Council for Aboriginal Business reported in its Business Reconciliation in Canada Guidebook of 2000, 2019 edition that the national indigenous economy is growing exponentially, contributing over $30 billion to Canada's GDP in 2019. As the Senate Prosperity Action Group noted in its 2021 report, indigenous business leaders have set a $100 billion performance target. And this brings me to my second point. Aboriginal Economic Development Corporations, AEDCs. These corporations are owned and operated by Indigenous communities. They invest in the, the community's money in community-owned subsidiaries, such as holding companies or social purpose parent companies. The Canadian Council for Aboriginal Business estimates that there will be nearly, nearly four, 500 AEDCs in Canada by 2020, or they had estimated this. 79% are in partnerships they hire from Indigenous communities, and more than 85% offer support services to community members. I'll move to my third topic, some successful Indigenous businesses in Quebec. 
the Listigouche Micmac fishery on the Ristigouche River and the Baie des Chaleurs is a multi-million dollar industry. It was the focus of a recent APTN documentary series. In 2021, in Listugish government, uh, the Listugish government signed a rights reconciliation agreement on fisheries, acknowledging its aboriginal and treaty rights to fish. We hope one day we'll see the same in Nova Scotia. The agreement further acknowledged that the Listugish Mi'kmaq First Nation has a sacred and inherent responsibility for the stewardship of the land, waters, and living things in their traditional territory. According to a CBC article, with, uh, with, the agreement, with the agreement is, according to a CBC article, with the agreement in place, every day, every, every day during the lobster season, the Mi'kmaq Rangers, empowered by indigenous law, meets fishing boats at the wharf and count lobsters. They collect 10% of the total catch to distribute it amongst the Mi'kmaq community of about 4,000 people. Community members cook the lobsters and they deliver to them to elder or picked up and other families. The remaining 90% of the catch is sold commercially. This is a successful story of a community operating a prosperous industry based in its inherent and constitutional rights. The second indigenous business working in Quebec that I want to highlight is Avata Explorations and Logistics Inc. AEL is a family-owned Inuit consulting firm in Nunavik that specializes in site assessments and remediations and sell fishing and hunting permits. The company in with family founders are outdoor enthusiasts who have lived all their lives in the north and are raising their family there. AEL has a strong corporate social responsibility policy, which includes organizing community, social, educational, and cultural activities for youth. In addition to this community impact, AEL has a large economic impact. It partnered with Senex Environmental Services, Inc. to incorporate Avatani Environmental Services, which provide logistic, remote workforce camp, and catering and environmental services to the mining and exploration industries. The partnerships balances local traditional knowledge with technical expertise and provides holistic solutions to a wide range of environmental issues. The third organization I'd like to mention is CREED, the Cree Real Estate Entrepreneurship Development Program of the EU Ichi Cree government. North of the village of Nimaska, near the James Bay, but far southwest of AEL in Nunavik, the Grand Council of the Crees allocate a significant amount of funding to local Cree entrepreneurs. The Cree program grants up to $100,000 to James Bay and Northern Quebec agreement beneficiaries who, whose businesses are based and operated in AUU Ichi as long as they work in private home constructions, renovations, home materials, financial services, landscaping and design, and commercial real estate. As Grand Chief Abel Bosom said at the Senate Committee pre-study on, on DRIP in 2021, and I quote, it has been precisely because our rights have been acknowledged and because we are recognized to be fully legitimate participants in the economy and in the political life of our region that we have contributed to the journey toward peaceful coexistence and social harmony, end of quote. Before concluding, I'll quickly tell four stories of smaller indigenous businesses of note operating in Quebec, a restaurant, a bookstore, a beauty brand, and an internationally renowned designer. The next time you are near Quebec City, make a reservation at Sagamite, an indigenous-owned restaurant. The original location is in Wandaki, 
well-known place to um, our colleague, Senator Odette, an urban reserve 25 minutes northwest of downtown Quebec City. And the second restaurant is in a, is in a stone wall building in the old Quebec City. The restaurants use food to introduce guests to the culture of the Huron Wendat, with a menu highlighting the First Nations traditional diet of wild game, including deer, caribou, moose, along with fish, native plants, herbs, and berries. Before a fire destroyed the original one of the key locations in 2018, the business had seen its profit increasing by 20 to 35 percent per year. Owners Steve Wado Handick turned the fire into an opportunity to expand the space. He doubled his employees recruited from the Wandaki community. He and his partner now also own two nearby, nearby boutique hotels in the old city of Quebec. A second smaller business is Sequoia, an indigenous beauty brand founded by Michele Lazore in 2002. The company is 100% owned and operated by indigenous women. Their products are scented with sweet grass, cedar, <coughs> red clover, blackberry, and sage. sage. The design, productions, and packaging is all done locally. The production is sustainable, and the ingredients are ethically sourced. She now has a shop in Kanawaki and also sells online throughout North America. Une troisième entreprise que j'aimerais mentionner est la librairie. Est la librairie. A third business is the Hanenorag Bookshop, also located in Wendaki. It is the only bookstore located in an indigenous community in Quebec. The shop includes a special section for indigenous books, including the Governor General Award winning uh, children's literature books. Tammy Beauvais. She is the fourth generation artisan and designer based in Kanawaki. Sophie Grégoire Trudeau owns one of her capes. In 2016, she gifted one, another one, to of Mr. Beauvais' beaded capes to Michelle Obama, featuring three glass beads that belongs to Mrs. Beauvais' great-grandmother. Mrs. Beauvais' website features, features bespoke feather dresses, bags, ties, blankets, and jewelry and includes her own designs and those of other indigenous designers. In conclusion. In closing, these examples represent only a tiny fraction of the incredible success and reach of indigenous business. But they represent hope for other indigenous businesses. Thank you, Senator Klein, for initiating this inquiry. We need to celebrate the economic successes of Indigenous peoples and show that all Canadians are working together to make economic reconciliation a reality. When Indigenous businesses prosper, all Canadians prosper. I look forward to hearing my fellow Senators talk about this bill uh, and about giving uh, Indigenous business people what they need to prosper. Thank you. Merci, Miigwech.